<laughs> I'm sure it's gonna go great tonight. And if it doesn't go well tonight, I'm shaving the head of every single intern. I have I've never organized uh, an event, at least on this scale or this type of event. I feel good about it. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm a little bit nervous because, I mean, it's, I mean, about, I don't know, 45 minutes away from people actually starting to get here. Tell me about being interns. That's great. How great is it, Sarah? Extremely great. Extremely great. <laughs> Damning with faint praise. How great is it, Mike, being an intern? I'm a little worried, actually. About being an intern? No, the fact that it's 635 and only one comedian is here. And uh, I think everything uh, is where it needs to be, but I'm not 100% I mean, I mean, it's still, I mean, there's some stuff, that, some loose ends that need to be tied up. And then just be like, you know, when you said, hey guys, my name's Mike Susan, I want to thank you all for coming tonight. We have a great show for you. We have three little... In front of the camera. Oh. Alrighty guys, I just want to thank everybody for showing up here this evening. My name is Mike Zuthi, we have a great show for you. See, I said you think twice. That's I? fine, it doesn't matter. Uh, and I really want to get to that, and really just want to get it done, and want the event to get started. Uh, but I feel like setup went really well this morning, and I feel like turnout is going to be, is going to be okay. So, uh, I'm feeling good, but nervous. So. I found it. I found out that it's it's harder than I thought to 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 get people to come to your events. Uh, I mean, just because you invite them doesn't mean that they're going to come and that they're going to they're going to give you money. And I found that that was much harder. Uh, and I also found it. I mean, I also found that things didn't. I mean, things didn't necessarily work. I mean, they didn't work out the way like I saw them at the very beginning. We were thinking about. I mean, things have have evolved a lot from where we were from that point. And I mean, we had an idea for like where the money was going to come from, who we were going to invite, who was going to show up. And it turns out that okay, where we were getting the money from, we're not actually getting the money from anymore. Who we initially invited, I mean, they're not. I mean, they're not. I mean, the primary crowd necessarily anymore. And I mean, we had to shift and we had to adjust. And <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for showing up. I just I saw the sign up there for the bar. It says you had to be 21. I could go through twice, so that's really good for me. It is great to see all your people here, and I am just happy to be invited. This really beats what I spent the rest of my week doing. I was working. I was standing on I-5 with a cardboard sign that said, we'll tell jokes for the return of my civil liberties. Here's the thing, people, we live in the land of opportunity, but you got to work for it. We got good pairs of tennis shoes hanging from the phone wires, but you got to climb up and get them down. No one's getting them for you. Derek, all of my shirt is because of your fancy campaign warehouse. I hope you're putting money into something, Governor, because it ain't in this building. Uh, I'm glad the governor has a sense of humor. I, I think it's absolutely great, because I think politicians should have a sense of humor. My favorite story about a politician and sense of humor was the first woman senator, U.S. senator in our history. Anyone know who that was? A little quiz for you here. Anybody? Margaret Chase Smith, give a round of applause. Republican of Maine. She was a wonderful senator, had a great sense of humor. She was often mentioned as the possible first woman president in the 1950s. A reporter asked her one day, said, Senator Smith, what would you do if you woke up and found yourself in the White House? She said, I would get dressed, run downstairs, apologize to Mrs. Eisenhower, and leave. <laughs> now look, I got nothing against people who are flat, busted, down and out, broke. You know what? I'm about that far away myself. But you don't bum money off of strangers. You bum money off your friends, right? If you don't got any friends, well, quit being such an asshole. <laughs> You obviously can't afford it. That's a privilege of wealth. Harry, what do you think of this set? Pretty fancy, huh? Yeah, the money they save on the building, they put into this. 
brilliant idea back there. I like that. Hey, this is the only campaign headquarters I've ever been to before that actually has a tire pump in the corner. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that over there, but if, if any of you get a little loaded, you can load up on air on your way out. <laughs> what the hell is that for? That, uh, politicians need hot air, not compressed air, Governor. That, uh, <laughs> bad move, sir. Bad move. Um, I mean, we made, made some mistakes along the way, but uh, I, think we've, I think we've done pretty well. So. I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. We're going to have a good time, most of all, for all of the volunteers who actually make <laughs> campaigning fun. Thank you very, very much. Funny thing about this gig, they invited me to come down because they thought it was funny. Nobody actually asked me who I was supporting in the race. <laughs> Surprise!